Hey guys, Dr. Daniel Sagai here, board certified dermatologist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for your support. I am nearing two years here on the channel, so I'm just super grateful for you all. Uh, what a journey it's been. Nice meeting so many of you from around the globe. I am a board certified dermatologist. I practice here in the Seattle area of Washington in Bellevue and Renton, Washington. Out of two offices, I cover medical, surgical, cosmetic dermatology. For those of you who don't know, I did get my MD degree at the University of Hawaii and also did my residency training at Harvard, uh, Harvard Medical School. Uh, they combined residency where I did cover multiple hospitals, including Mass General, Brigham and Women's, Beth Israel, Boston Children's, and even more. So today's video is gonna be about hyperpigmentation and melasma, both important topics in people of color. Me being an Asian American, you know, photo type three, uh, that is someone who can tan on the easier side, sometimes burn, but I can tan easier. And so me having more of this pigment tendency, if I have an acne lesion that resolves and heals, it will leave a dark blemish for months and sometimes like four months, even longer perhaps. And so it's really important to talk about this because there are different types of hyperpigmentation. And also melasma is just such a distressful, kind of like hair loss, just, a, just very distressing for my patients and you see it more in women and there's not a lot of curable options or there's, not, there's no cure. The goal isn't to cure it, it's more to manage it and to lower the volume. So let's get into both topics. You guys might be wondering, why is this guy wearing a jacket right now? Well, I just did a, a beauty event with a skincare brand. And so, uh, you know, I, I just thought, hey, let's just do a quick YouTube video. I'll probably change out when I start talking about products. I might go upstairs in my, ba uh, my bathroom to go over some products on what to use to help treat hyperpigmentation or melasma. But let's just talk about pigment in general, okay? Uh, let's talk about a melanocyte. A melanocyte produces pigment. Pigment being in the form of melanin, it gets stored and transported by melanosomes, which are organelles uh, within, uh, made by melanocytes. Look at people of different colors, someone who's fair skin versus darker pigment or more pigment, would you say that they have more melanocytes? Actually, no, we all have similar amounts of melanocytes, but our melanosomes, the size, the, the distribution are different amongst us. Distribution matters, but also size of your melanosome is different. So you might say someone with a darker pigment, uh, pigmented skin will have larger melanosomes than someone who's fair skin. But when you have hyperpigmentation, there are different causes. Most common form of hyperpigmentation would be post-inflammatory. You just have a stain, you have pigment incontinence from some kind of trauma, like an injury, you bump your leg and it leaves a brown stain there for a long period of time. You know, acne we talked about, if I get an acne lesion that resolves, it will leave a brown stain and that's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. You know, you have a rash like poison ivy, eczema, psoriasis, something like that happens to your skin, it will leave a stain because you're gonna have spill melanin, uh, which is contained in melanosomes. And so that, that event will leave a blemish and you know, that, could stick around for a while. And number one thing to do for that is sunscreen. You don't wanna get it tanned and you think, oh, I'm gonna tan the surrounding skin, it's gonna help. No, actually will make it worse. You wanna keep the melanin production down at its lowest possible rate. You don't wanna give an excuse to make more pigment. And so sunscreen's huge. Give it, you know, a nice moisturizer to help soothe the skin, repair the skin barrier, kinda of help with cell turnover. So I think a good moisturizing cream is important terms of just like the best ultimate healing ointment you know there's lotions creams ointments i think ointments are better healing a spot so if i have a spot that was recently injured uh, a cut or a burn aquaphor or vaseline or cerave healing ointment a skin fix 911 ointment is all all great picks for adding an extra layer of skin a barrier an occlusive barrier that semi-occlusive actually where it could lead uh, lead to having oxygen enter and letting the bad stuff leave, like the, the drainage and fluid can escape, but also keeping um, oxygen uh, entering the area to help heal the wound. So that's huge. Sunscreen um, for hyperpigmentation. Other causes for hyperpigmentation that we could see would be medication related. So antiarrhythmics for the heart can cause uh, hyperpigmentation. But other things that can cause it would be like oral antibiotics, you know, minocycline can cause this grayish, 
uh, discoloration of your skin. And that is not commonly seen, especially now that we're better at keeping the uh, length of time you're on this antibiotic to a minimum. And in clinic, you know, we use this antibiotic for select patients and we always you know talk about we don't want long-term antibiotic use because it can change your gut flora as well as the skin over time and not good for your dentition it can discolor your shins and i've seen people with this bluish gray brown discoloration on the shins for people you know old school docs would just refill on an annual basis just keep giving you oral antibiotics like minocycline so uh, that's that's another cause things you can see hyperpigmentation would be like you know, lichen planus, lupus, like discoid lupus, you can see hyperpigmentation. So those are more of the skin issues. Carp, confluent and reticulated papillomatosis, you can see as well, um, you know, other things. You can even have leukemia or lymphoma leaving a brown patch. So there's so many different things that can leave a brown patch. So if you have anything that's acting weird, not going away, you're trying to treat it with over-the-counter stuff, it's not helping, definitely see your dermatologist because we are trained to recognize different types of uh, hyperpigmentation okay melasma melasma is such an important topic so common we see it in people of color especially uh, Asians Hispanics uh, women more than men but I do see it in men too so there is a hormonal component because we do elite we do see a lot of the onset during pregnancy or postpartum uh, with hormonal surges during pregnancy it could be um, increasing the pigmentation in your epidermis. If it goes down to your dermis, then it's really difficult to treat. And you know that can happen if, with too much hydroquinone use, which is now only prescription. It's no longer over the counter. And if you do buy hydroquinone um, in a foreign country, be very careful with it because you gotta take breaks from that uh, ingredient. That compound can really cause an ochronosis-like hyperpigmentation that goes deep in your dermis. And if you shine a woods lamp on it, it's just not gonna light up like how we want it to. We want it to be superficial pigment that we can peel away or exfoliate or treat with our topicals, which we'll get into very soon. Melasma, we see it, um, you know, usually sides of your face, and it could be these well-defined reticulated brown patches that go towards the center of your face. It can even be on your neck. A lot of times people don't like it on the forehead. Worse for my female patients is that they are so distressed by the upper cutaneous lip having melasma there and they feel badly because it says it always looks like I have a shadow there, it looks like facial hair, people mistaken me for having a mustache. So uh, very, very sad chronic issue that we don't have a magic bullet to treat or cure it. And so it's all about like combining things that your skin can tolerate. We don't want to overdo things and cause redness that leaves the brown. Then we defeat the purpose of trying to treat your melasma as we add more pigment. And the same as like being irresponsible with hydroquinone. If you go crazy with it and you add more pigment to your skin by not taking breaks, that's, that's not what we want. It's going to definitely add more gasoline to the fire. So next we'll talk about um, some, some topicals or ingredients to consider when you have melasma. I got out of one of my favorite jackets. I love that jacket, by the way. I want to now talk about products to consider for melasma. And I just want to say that I'm sorry it took a while for this video to be done. I just want to make sure it was complete. It's such a broad topic um, that I really wanted to make sure the products I accumulated, you know, was complete because, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's not one size fits all. There's no magic bullet like we talked about. So thank you for waiting for this video. And just kind of want to go through like what I would talk about in a dermatology visit because um, you know I've been doing dermatology for quite some time I was in residency for four years and now out of, as a, an attending physician for six so you know it's you pick up a lot of experience you see what works and what doesn't and you know there's a lot of things in the YouTube channel that I can't say because of this there's never medical advice for you it's always best to see your dermatologist in person for an in-person consultation so we can personalize things to you but there are things we can talk about like in general you can consider over the counter you know hydroquinone we talked about you can't get that over the counter anymore which is I think is, is fine because I've seen people abuse it and cause uh, worsening of their hyperpigmentation on their face where it's just gotten so deep and blue and gray um, and that the, when you get that bluish gray discoloration you just know the pigment is deeper down you know you get that Tyndall effect where the the blue light reflects off the deep pigment back of your eye and you see this bluish look to your face and that's just not good melasma or classic of pregnancy see so males and females things you can consider number one thing is a sunscreen 
okay? You want a sunscreen that S, that's SPF 30 and above, maybe even consider SPF 50 and above, and reapply every two hours when you're outside in a sunny area. If you can, pick a tinted sunscreen. Tinted sunscreen meaning it has iron oxides. Iron oxides or tinted sunscreens can help block blue light or visible light that can cause further photo damage or darkening of your spots from sunlight. You know, the sunlight will, ref, uh, will give you some visible light spectrum uh, wavelengths that can cause darkening of your, of your uh, melasma, but also potentially our devices over a cumulative uh, period of time. You know, the devices, whether your iPad, your phone, your laptop, that can be controversial. In the lab settings, they do show that it can cause free radical damage leading to photo aging. Is in the real life setting, does it do it? I mean, I think accumulative wise, it might might stand true. People could argue that it's not a real thing, but in general, I have now become a big supporter of tinted sunscreen, especially if you have melasma, which is so, so hard to treat. And um, that's your quarterback. If you're not willing to wear sunscreen, then I'm gonna say that all the other treatments are just not worth it because you're gonna be fighting a current um, for sure. And other things you could be talking to your dermatologist or OBGYN would be, is the contraceptive uh, a potential cause? You know, starting a contraceptive, did you start noticing melasma come up and you might need to stop or change out your contraceptive, whether it's the IUD or the um, birth control pill. So sunscreen, dermatology. I've talked about this brand uh, quite a bit. I like their sunscreens. I like their universal tinted sunscreen. Uh, their universal tinted moisturizer SPF 46. The newer one is their SPF 44 physical, which is just zinc and titanium. This came out in the summer of last year, and it is a thicker consistency than the, the universal tinted moisturizer with zinc and octanoxate. So it's more of a matte finish, whereas the other one gives you more of a dewy finish. So I will alternate. They're both tinted uh, formulations, so this will should help block against blue light. So this is one uh, sunscreen you could consider. Another sunscreen that I like is Murad. This is more of a splurge though. It's over 50 bucks for the City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This one kind of gives you in between like a dewy but matte finish. It's kind of hard to explain, but it also has iron oxides as well as like vitamin C as well. And so it's, you're paying more for this purely mineral sunscreen, but it does have other nice antioxidants in this as well. I'll show you this consistency. I brought this to LA the other week when I did some filming. So it's a lighter tint here. Comes out a little bit like peach colored there. It was a very light tint, and that's why I liked about the Universal Tinted Moisturizer from Dermatology is that it doesn't stain the inside of my mask like um, some other ones, which I don't mind, you know, and the La Roche-Posay Anthelios 50 is a little bit thicker uh, tint and I like that sunscreen a lot. Although it's only titanium uh, based, there's only titanium in it, which you guys have mentioned, great job to you guys, um, is that um, it covers UVA and UVB very well, but the UVA one and two, um, not as well as zinc oxide. UVA one coverage is just not as good as zinc oxide. So that one's a nice one, but it does stain the inside of my mask, of my mask. So um, Murad, great option for those with melasma, dermatology, very good option. If you don't want the full-on tint, I like Coco Kinds Daily SPF. SPF 32 has zinc oxide, uh, but it does block blue light uh, using its more natural ingredients, and it uses like blue algae. To, it's a pretty cool, innovative way to block visible light. So if you want, you don't want the tint. There are other options besides iron oxides in your sunscreen. Uh, so this one's a really nice one. Now going to what serums can you put on? What other things can I use to battle melasma? Like I've been using sunscreen, nothing's helping, what can I do? Next would be, you're gonna look into a retinoid if you're not pregnant. If you're, not, if you're pregnant, gotta hold off on the retinoids, just stick with sunscreen, talk to your dermatologist about other safe things you could do during pregnancy. I won't talk about it here. It's all personalized in your visit. The, um, you know, having a Retinoid is so important because retinoids will do its magic over time by increasing cell turnover, lightening your dark spots. It also does other things by helping with acne, keeping your pores clean, and helping increase your collagen production, thickening your skin. But in terms of the pigment, it really helps with epidermal turnover and, and lightening those dark spots. 
You can get a retinoid with um, alpha hydroxy acids to help exfoliate or even niacinamide, I'm all for it. So a retinoid that I like, I've talked about before, would be the Alpha Ret by Skin Better Science. Really good brand here. This one's not easily found at the store. Uh, Skin Better Science has told me they use tretinoin conjugated with lactic acid. You also get glycolic acid. These alpha hydroxy acids and the Alpha Ret, the alpha hydroxy acids help exfoliate the skin and then the retinoid will do its thing with cell turnover. So a great product to use if you have melasma. Now that's prescription strength is what I'm told is tretinoin is an alpha ret. If you wanna go with the over the counter stuff that is Paula's choice, this one's a 1% retinol. So when I talk about retinols for it to work well, I usually recommend 0.25% and up. This one's 1% and they disclose that. So this is um, you know on the stronger side, it says 1%, 1% retinol treatment. This one has vitamin C, it has peptides. So I like peptides in my skincare because topical peptides are great. Cell signaling, increasing um, your collagen production. Vitamin C, it also has licorice root extract, which are great at lightening dark spots. Plus it has willow bark uh, extract too. Willow bark extract, I like a lot because it almost looks, it works like salicylic acid. It has some exfoliative properties. So in overall, I like this uh, retinol a lot. Back to this. I, uh, this one also has niacinamide, which works very well with your retinoid to help lighten, brighten, uh, lighten those dark spots and brighten your skin. So great, um, my holy grail right here. But this one also very solid. All you need now is when you do at bedtime, because I'm not a fan of using it during the day, although there are photostable retinols out there. If it is unstable in the sun, it's not gonna be useful. It's gonna be deactivated by the sun. So I say at bedtime, put a pea size amount, one pump should give you a pea size, right there. Boom, break it up into two, dots on the face, don't forget your nose, and connect the dots. Yes, you could just focus only on the brown spots if you have melasma, but I'd say treat your whole face if you can tolerate it because it's great as a field treatment, not spot treatment. Like we said, it helps with keeping the pores clean, prevents acne, and also helps with collagen production. So great stuff right there. Uh, I, I also throw a um, layer of moisturizer over it uh, at bedtime and then I go to bed. It takes a few months before you start seeing lightening. It might take two to four months before you see lightening of your dark spots. Now going into other things you can do on top of that. If you're skin sensitive, stop right there. If you can tolerate more things, we'll talk about other goodies you can consider in addition once you got this down. Vitamin C, I love vitamin C serum. So I'm gonna talk about dermatology again, the CE plus F. This one's about $70, not as, not as expensive as the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic, but uh, a nice dupe here. And I've been using this one for over a year and a half, a nice serum that is great, gentle, doesn't irritate my skin. It's 15% ascorbic acid, like the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic. It has the uh, vitamin E and the ferulic acid to all work synergistically together to help lighten your dark spots, brighten your skin. So use this in the morning after a cleanse. Very nice serum there that you can apply. I'll just apply some on my neck. So good stuff there. And a little bit on the pricier side, if you want something a little bit more affordable, I'm a fan of Naturium's Vitamin C Complex Serum. Very nice, put that on. Comes out in a pump instead of a dropper if you like pumps better. Very convenient to put on. There you go. And then another brand that I like is Rock. This is the Dropper Multi-Correction Reviving Plus Glow I mentioned on the Today Show. Great uh, ascorbic acid derivative. It's the ethylated ascorbic acid. So um, this is a thicker texture. It's almost like jelly. But it blends, it melts away very quickly. Put some on my arm there. Uh, but so this is, a, this is a nice option as well. I want to see more data on ethylated uh, ascorbic acid because supposedly it's more stable than ascorbic acid, which is very unstable itself. So they're saying this is more stable Plus, it might even penetrate to the collagen more readily and help with um, anti-aging uh, your collagen, increase collagen production and such. So those would be some great options for you. Vitamin C, I'm a huge fan of because in the last year and a half to two years, I've been very consistent with my vitamin C serums. And I've lightened a lot of dark spots and freckles 
that I picked up from living in Hawaii. I don't want to blame Hawaii, but you know, when you live in paradise the whole year, year round for X amount of years, you know, you're going to pick up some sun damage, photo damage for sure. And so I still have a good amount of sun damage, but we're going to keep working on it. Right. And we got to embrace our wrinkles, embrace our pores. We don't want perfect skin, but you know, if we can just try to age the way we want, everyone has different goals. And my goals as a mid, in some of my mid thirties is to, uh, work on the dark spots, maintain the collagen. And, um, you know, if I ever get melasma, you know, I, I'm going to have a good routine going so that hopefully it, I can turn the volume down. Unfortunately, I can't press stop and end it, uh, melasma completely, but we can try and lower the volume. Okay. So vitamin C serums. After that, we got, you guys start thinking about like, all right, I'm doing all these things, right? I got to see my dermatologist and that's where I come in big thing is be careful with light devices energy you know IPLs is not a true laser it's intense pulse light lasers are different from IPL those require things to be in one synchronous uh, wavelength and it's very intense light that is going to be focused on pigment blood vessels your collagen different targets if you ever go to someone who doesn't know what they're doing and they're going to shine light onto your melasma there is a huge risk of it rebounding and getting worse. So I caution you on that. When I did my residency at Harvard, they invented the dermatology laser. And the guy who invented it said, you gotta be careful with light on melasma. Be very careful. I know not all lasers are built the same and some may help. They're even looking at like CO2 lasers helping with melasma. But I've even seen people who've got melasma after like a fractionated CO2 laser too. So um, gotta be very careful. Then, so I talk to patients about being careful with, with light energy, see a trained specialist professional who can really tailor the settings to your skin type. If you do do laser, if you don't, you know, I talk about chemical peels with you and chemical peels sound scary. We need to change the name, but it's putting some kind of acid or chemical on your face to help either exfoliate, go down to the pores, clean them out but also cause micro injury to the epidermis or even the superficial dermis, depending on what strength you do. And that will help with cell turnover, but also increase collagen production by, you know, forcing your skin to heal itself and renew the skin with nice new skin, new collagen and such. So I love chemical peels. I like to do it to myself, you know, every year, at least one a year, but hopefully multiple if I can, if I have the time. Uh, but chemical peels are great for chem uh, are, are good for melasma because you won't get that rebound You don't get that worsening of melasma with chemical peels if you go to someone who's trained but A series of chemical peels is what to expect if you decide to do it one won't give you um, You know the expectation won't meet your expectations most likely so you have to commit to a series of peels because you want to keep peeling off the top layer of skin and bringing that pigment up to the top layer and then hopefully peel it away and keep lighten it with each chemical peel. So the different types, like for me, I use skin SkinCeuticals chemical peels. We use the micro peel plus 30, which is just a 30% salicylic acid. We're going to hit it hard with salicylic acid. That's our intro peel. Then we have the advanced corrective peel. We have the smart TCA peel, which is that intermediate peel that goes down to your second layer of skin superficially, superficial dermis, and causes that micro injury stimulating more collagen. My patients love that. I loved it. I peeled the most with that. Uh, if you don't peel, don't worry, still doing its thing. You don't have to peel with a chemical peel. They're getting much better with the technology where you don't have to have a full blown peel where you have sheets of skin coming off. You'll notice improvement, just more taut, glowing skin, uh, your pores being cleaner, you know, just, it's just nice seeing people with a tightening around their jawline, you know, and their cheekbones after a chemical peel. So big, big, um, big fan of that you can do it during the summer but be very very careful in the summertime if you do chemical peels it's best to do during the winter and fall uh, or spring summer we do uh, give it to people but uh, you just gotta be super careful like I've done that to myself where I gave myself a chemical peel in Hawaii went for a walk after wearing sunscreen but I didn't have sunscreen on myself to reapply and I got streaky and that was right before I went to Japan to give a Grand Rounds talk, which was really fun, but they were kind of looking like, what is wrong with this American dermatologist? You got some crazy streaking on his face. Something's not right here. So don't make my mistake. Be very careful with the sun. Sunscreen and reapplication is key. And that, um, I should have taken pictures of how streaky I was afterwards. 
I choose to try to forget about it, but, but learn from myself, okay? Uh, other things you can consider, other ingredients that help prevent melanin production. Someone's always knocking on my door every time I do these videos. This one wasn't as loud, that was a nice UPS guy. Um, sometimes they sound like they're gonna break my door down. But anyway, other things that, that are tyrosinase inhibitors that will, that will um, disrupt the melanin production would be azelaic acid. So I prescribe azelaic acid 15 to 20%. You can find azelaic acid in 10% formulations over the counter. You know, things that come to mind would be naturiums, azelaic acid. Their OG is in a dropper, 10% azelaic acid, very nice. But their newer one, the emulsion, 10% azelaic acid, very nice. I gave it to my sister to try out. Um, but I have the dropper one, comes out as a clear fluid, just really gentle. Some people might notice a little bit of a sting with it, and you can, yes, you can. If you don't have sensitive skin, you could use this with a retinoid, but be very careful. This one helps block the tyrosinase inhibitor from working and making more pigment. So azelaic acid, something to consider, either prescription over the counter. Hey Beauty brand that I found recently is Cos de Baja's azelaic acid serum. Oh, what the heck is on the... Is that chocolate? Or is this dried up sunscreen? Interesting, it's like putty. Okay, uh, maybe we'll cut that out. But anyways, this one is a nice serum that has niacinamide in it, which you guys know, great in lightening those dark spots. It also has green tea extract, aloe, which is packed with antioxidants, panthenol, uh, which is high uh, moisturizing, and you also have um, hyaluronic acid in this guy here. So very good, nice serum, love it, very gentle. I'm mentioning this is definitely my K-Beauty shout out because that is, this impressed me so much. 10% azelaic acid as well. So big thumbs up there. I just finished clinic, I had quite the day. I just wanted to do a quick little plug on hydroquinone. So say you see me in clinic, we would talk about things like hydroquinone, that's prescription, or even you know prescription strength retinoids, like this is Tazerac or Tazeratine. When you pair up hydroquinone with your retinoid, it actually can do some magic. And we even talk about a combination cream called Triluma that you have a topical steroid, hydroquinone and a retinoid, usually tretinoin mixed in to the um, mixed in. And it's a really nice way to lighten your dark spot. So I know it requires a visit with me or a dermatologist to get that prescription. But I just wanna talk about that. That's actually a very effective topical. It might be one of the best topicals out there hydroquinone. Um, I use it for myself when I have uh, hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Not very often. I use the vitamin C and retinoids more often, but this is nice. It smells a little interesting. All hydroquinone smells a little a little different, and uh, it also can have a little bit of an interesting color. It can stain the, the tube. Um, I've also tried generic um, hydroquinone in the past too, and that also stains the tube as well. This one is uh, hydroquinone 4%. You know, we also have um, formulations that go up to 8%. And we'll always talk about how to take breaks, how long you can use hydroquinone, because if you use too much, like we mentioned before, you can get that ochronosis-like hyperpigmentation, that grayish blue look, which we don't want, depositing, being, you know, those deposits deep in the skin, even in the dermis, and that's not what we want. So. You know, we'll talk about prescription retinoids and hydroquinone, Obagi also, you can get their kits where they even have their own tretinoin that you would use um, with your hydroquinones. This blender is nice, New Derm Blender. And um, yeah, so I hope, that, so I'll go back into jumping into talking about other products now. Things you can consider besides hydroquinone, which is the classic tyrosinase inhibitor would be kojic acid or butin. Those you can find in different formulations. La Roche-Posay made a glycolic B5 formulation. Over time though, it does make this kind of syrupy crust and it gets kind of like this, not a flattering look to the color of it. But before when I used it, it was pretty good. It kind of has like a stronger like an alcohol smell to it, which can be off-putting to some people, but it has 
glycolic acid, which you guys know is an alpha hydroxy acid. It has kojic acid, which we talked about is also another way to block uh, tyrosinase. It doesn't have arbutin, but it does have vitamin E, which is another antioxidant, but it also has tranexamic acid or TXA. TXA, you can see in topical formulations, oral formulations, you can, uh, I can prescribe you very, it can be quite effective for some people, but you have to be a right candidate because there is a, a big risk to it, clotting at risk with tranexamic acid. So you got to talk to your dermatologist about this risk if you ever are interested in it and read about it because it is used for like people who are with like, uh, with bleeding issues, you know, and so it can clot and give you a clot, which could be devastating. If you get a DVT or deep venous thrombosis that goes to your lung, it could be game over. So you got to really think about, is it worth going on something like that? You know, we, there are risk factors that we try to screen you for. If you're a smoker, if you're on, you know, oral contraceptive pills, those pro clotting risk factors, you definitely got to let us know. And so I don't give that often or at all really, because I don't feel like the risk is worth it, but there are dermatologists who are specialists in this that will, um, you know, really give this out more regularly. So, um, you know, this, this has TXA, you can consider it, but it doesn't last very long. It's my only critique. I've only used it for like a month and a half. And then I noticed that the color changed in about a couple months. And so, uh, be very careful. I can imagine people with sensitive skin, maybe not tolerating this as well because it's mixed with a bunch of different great ingredients, kind of all in one serum, so be careful. Um, but again, just more of a teaching point that these ingredients do work in um, that common goal of lightening your dark spots, okay? We can talk about exfoliants too, like leave on exfoliants in another video. I just feel like exfoliants should just be used one to three times a week at most, the alpha hydroxy acid exfoliants. I like skin um, betters exfoliative pads every once in a while. But really, I think the chemical peels like once every four weeks is probably much better than doing your home exfoliants. I think all these other ingredients are great to have as a consist on a consistent basis. I feel like it's just too much to put on. I feel like it's just too much to put on um, your melasma in addition to all the things we've talked about if you're using leave-on exfoliant. So be very careful. Vitamin C serum that I forgot to mention would be May Love's uh, Glow Maker. Great, great also duped to the uh, SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic. So another uh, serum you can consider uh, for battling your dark spots and applying in the morning. And very affordable, only like 30 bucks. So great. Alrighty, so I hope this video is helpful. It's quite long, but I had a good time chatting with you guys. I hope it was helpful. And please hit the like button. Please share with your friends who deal with hyperpigmentation and melasma. Again, thanks for waiting for this video to be released and hopefully it was complete enough, but it did mention a lot of things I would talk about in a dermatology visit with you. But again, everything, it has to be personalized to you and your skin type and your skin history. And your goals are, everyone's goals are different, you know? And there's always have to set expectations with melasma because it is a chronic uh, skin issue where I know dermatologists with all the toys and devices and peels in the world and they still deal with it. And so if you look at people with all the money in the world, they can't get their hair back. You know, there's no magic bullets out there because otherwise they'd be all over it. Melasma, hair loss, very hard conditions to treat. No magic bullet yet. So I'll keep you guys updated on any new developments on the channel as well as in clinic. So thank you for making appointments in clinic with me. I am loving meeting you guys in person. So please subscribe to the channel and you know, drop some comments if you have had success with melasma, anything that worked. Please share with our nice community here. Appreciate the positivity as always. Take care guys. Have a nice start to 2022 and be safe. Peace.